Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel, welcome to a Gran Turismo opinion piece video of sorts where I'm kind of just going to wax lyrical for about 5 or 6 minutes about the subject we've got up there on the screen of how to make sport mode great again. But before we get into that though, you may well not have ever seen the footage that is on the screen here in front of you. This is actually the original Gran Turismo Sport intro from back in October 2017. Now, the introduction to the game was updated when they released Spec Mode a few years later, but you can still access this introduction from the game itself. And I believe that PD don't quite realise the juggernaut they released onto the sim racing world when Gran Turismo Sport was released in subsequent years afterwards because I would say that a great deal of people's sim racing, or certainly online racing journey started in GT Sport. Whether they're still playing Gran Turismo 7, still playing Sport Mode or moved on to iRacing or ACC or any other of the sim racing games out there, I believe this is where the journey started for a lot of people for competitive online racing. And as I said, I don't think PD quite realise what an actual gem they had in their hands, which is why when Gran Turismo 7 released and Sport Mode pretty much hadn't evolved in the slightest from Gran Turismo Sport, in some ways you could say it devolved, you know, we've got less players now in Daily Race C, I would say the tyre wall where models not were anywhere near as good. And back when GT Sport first released, daily races actually were daily races before they kind of converted to weekly races. And now, obviously, that is the same format that they follow on Gran Turismo 7's sport mode. But yeah, I would say there's a lot of times in Gran Turismo 7 when you're playing sport mode that you could still be playing the same game. You could still replicate the exact same race, maybe even in a better fashion back on Gran Turismo Sport Twitch. To me, it just shouldn't be the way. Now, I wouldn't say Sport Mode is dying on Gran Turismo 7. Uh, it's still a lot of people playing. I still enjoy playing it. I'm not maybe playing quite as much as I used to, but I do still enjoy playing it. Uh, but I do kind of get the feeling that the daily races die off very quickly in particular. You know, Mondays are still quite busy. Maybe Tuesday is still got a bit going on, but by Wednesday, a lot of the daily races have started to tail off significantly. And I think if PD are not careful, they might have to do something pretty soon to maybe bring the game back to life. And this is going to basically be my suggestion. I'm very interested to know what you people out there would think of this. So, PlayStation 5 Pro releases towards the end of the year as far as I am aware. Why not have for PlayStation 5 Pro releasing, whenever it does release, whether it's at the end of this year or the beginning of next year or the middle of next year, I don't know, but why not have for PlayStation 5 Pro releasing a DLC for Gran Turismo 7, which is Gran Turismo Sport 2? You could charge £15-£20 for it, I don't know. And then you could use that platform to basically make the revolutionary jump from what we've got in sport mode now to what we're all kind of craving for. Now, obviously, it wouldn't just be for PlayStation 5 Pro. The original OG PlayStation 5 would still obviously get the game as well, but we drop PlayStation 4. I'm sorry to anybody that's a PlayStation 4 owner out there if that's what you're still using, but that console is now 11 years old. And I put a video out way back in Gran Turismo 7's release kind of window that I didn't really think the fact it was on PS4 was too much of a problem. I'm probably wrong with that. I think the f some of the things like the, the lack of cars on track are probably down to the PlayStation 4 still being supported. So, GT Sport 2 releases a DLC, £15-£20, PlayStation 5 Pro release date, still on the PlayStation 5 as well, and the sky's the limit. You know, make it very clear this is an online component only. You know, don't kind of send people down the rabbit hole they did when GT Sport first got announced that people thought it was going to be a fully fledged Gran Turismo game. You know, make it very clear this is online only. Uh, the single kind of single player thing I would maybe have is maybe kind of have some kind of custom race set up where you can use Sophie AI. Obviously now we're just on PlayStation 5 consoles so we can maybe get the full fat Sophie AI into uh, GT Sport 2 for when you want to maybe practice some races and ultimately there's no limit to what they can then do with daily races GTWS maybe make the next official GTWS season 
on GT Sport 2 only. You know, obviously you're going to lose some players because maybe they're not willing to buy the DLC, but anybody that's serious about it is going to. I mean, I'll actually think they'll easily sell 250,000, if not more, copies or uh, DLC copies, if you like, of uh, GT Sport 2 without a problem. So now we've got money coming into the pot. Now we can get new cars in, we can pay for the licenses, we can get new tracks in as well. Uh, obviously, add the cars into GT7, add them into the tracks into GT7 as well. Don't make them just a GT Sport exclusive, but use the DLC factor to bring in the funds, give us the licenses, and yeah. There's just so many more things they could do. Bring in dynamic weather for some of the, the tracks that really should have them into Lagos. I'm really interested to know what you would think of this idea. A GT Sport DLC for Gran Turismo 7 only on PlayStation 5 consoles. Would you buy it? That's the question. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye now.